laser, an acronym, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Sorry to interrupt, sir. It's doctor. Oh, sorry to interrupt, doctor. It's just the viewer was about to click on another video. And we have some awesome information about lasers that we don't want anyone to sleep through. But I... Uh, can you just go? I think Sears is having a sell on Tweed. <laughs> he left his lecture notes. This should be fun. Okay, a material such as a liquid, gas, blah, 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 in a closed chamber, reflective mirrors, good grief. I'm sorry, this is still way too dry. This isn't going to work. These are lasers we're talking about, like total planetary annihilation lasers. Let's try to take this from the top. <laughs> Professor Monotone was right. Laser is an acronym. Light. Amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Look, it's real simple. Take the classic Mentos soda fountain. We have a gain medium, which is a fancy way to talk about some object. Solid, liquid, gas, or in this example, soda inside a plastic bottle, which in the real case would represent the laser cavity. Then we take a pump source, which is something that excites the gain medium, like the Mentos excites the soda. When the gain medium is excited, it generates photons that bounce back and forth on mirrors on either side of the cavity. Or in our example, the bottle acts like the amplifier. A major difference between the two is that with a laser, the beam is constantly emitting, while the pressure in the Mentos fountain eventually dissipates. <laughs> you again? Can we please get him out of here? Look, we drop the Mentos, physics happens, and bam, a laser. We can get different wavelengths by using different gain mediums. <laughs> yes, with the Mentos analogy, the different gain mediums would be the different types of soda used. Different gain mediums will result in different wavelengths which result in different colors. For example, check out this chart that shows a few common lasers and their wavelengths. See how each gain medium produces a different wavelength? Now, just for fun, let's look at the same chart with the CO2 laser. Check out the difference. Now don't try to use that to cut the crust off your sandwich. That sucker's got some serious power. The human eye can only see a small portion of the light spectrum, which is why we must use electronics to map the beam profile. On this chart, you can see the visible spectrum only spans approximately 300 nanometers. Aren't you going to talk about the beam's properties? What? Who let you back in here? I had to climb through the ventilation shaft. Oh. I was just about to cover that. As the beam emits from the partially reflective mirror of the laser cavity source, it is coherent, i.e. the photons are in sync with phase and wavelength as well as collimated or not divergent. The evolution of the beam radius along the propagation direction is called a caustic. Look, Doc, I don't want to sound too caustic, but you're about as dry as an elephant's skin. Can you at least try to make it a little entertaining? I have a PowerPoint. Wow, just wow. Should I go get it? Sure, that would be fantastic. Okay, that bought us some time. Let's try to hurry through this. So where the beam comes together at its smallest location, here, this is the focus or waste location. This is a natural occurrence within all beams. How well a beam focuses is a measurement of quality. If we look at this beam, we want to take the distance from the waist where the cross section is twice the section of the waist. Sorry, I know this is lame, but we need to understand it. This distance is called the Rayleigh length. I have the PowerPoint. Where do I plug the memory stick? Actually, we just finished. Sorry, we just don't have any more time for your PowerPoint. Thankfully. What did you say? Aren't you going to talk about the laser's prop?